Are you ready to find out what the West Indies squad will be for the T20 World Cup coming up? Well, here's our prediction right here. Let the viewers know, man, who are we going with at number 15 for the West Indies T20 World Cup squad? Prediction from the reverse scoop. Number 15 is Obed McCoy from St. Vincent and Guanines, left arm fast bowler. Have a lot of variations. And the reason why I'm going to go with, with McCoy, because you already have, from the list that we selected, you already have three other fast bowlers bowling the right arm fast medium. With Obed McCoy bowling his left arm variations, would be giving the batsman something to think about. He has three slower ball variations he has a good yorker and he has a good quick bouncer and when on song it's really a handful that's the reason why i select obed mccoy absolutely man we need a left armor in the squad right and his skill set is particularly suited to the shorter format where he can deliver those slower balls deliver the yorker with accuracy and that skill set in a t20 game where he can get the batter to either just take a single or make it a dot ball you know, is a highly hill that's needed in this format of the game. And McCoy's ability to execute again under pressure and his effectiveness across phases of the game makes him a strategic player for this squad. Obed McCoy, number 15 for this West Indies squad prediction that we're doing. Let's move on to number 14, Mark. Who are we going with on number 14, man? 14, I'm going with O'Shea Thomas, right on fast bowler from Leeward Islands, Jamaica. He looks a bit more, much more fitter, running in fast up to the wickets. Looks like the real deal now. He hasn't really picked up a lot of wickets in the four-day format. What I'm seeing is very impressive. And I think he could come into his own. The main thing with, with Thomas, he has good pace. Seems to develop in some good variations as well. But the main thing is we love to see from, from him is consistency and his economy going down. But I think he's a, he's a, good, a good fit for the West Indies team. And he's recognized for his raw pace and the ability to deliver bouncer heavy spells that challenges even the best batsman in the world. And his role is often to provide breakthroughs with the new ball or to hurry the batsman in the middle overs, you know, making him a potent force for these for this attack. And again, he brings something different to the bowling lineup, right? I mean, we're going to name some of these other guys that are in this squad. What we looked at was the differentiation of skill sets that these guys bring. You know, Obed McCoy brings something different than an O'Shane Thomas. That's where we're kind of going with this. O'Shane Thomas, number 14. Let's go with number 13, Mark. Who are we going with on number 13? Yeah, one of the main batsmen in the team, Brandon King. Right hand batsman. Would love to see him a little bit more consistency. Seems to make a lot of decent scores and then three or four innings, nothing really. So it's all or nothing with him. But once he can get his consistency going, he's a, he's a good batsman. He'll have all the strokes elegant stroke player and a good fit for this T20 team. Not a powerful strike of the ball, more grace and timing. And he, he makes a good fit at the top of the order or in the middle order for West Indies team. He's a natural opener and he sets the tone up front. So I think it's going to be key utilizing these guys in right places and score quickly, take responsibility, makes him a key player for this West Indies attack. And he scored runs as well coming the last couple of years and showcased good form. The white ball cricket. You know, Brendan King comes in at number 13. Who are we going with at number Number 12, Mark. Number 12, Azari Joseph, the leader of the attack, fast bowler. Had some aggression. Our attack seems to have the knack of picking up wickets in crucial periods in time. We'd we'll love to see him both flat out in this coming World Cup. A very good prospect for West Indies and he has a good attitude. Serious type of guy, reminds me of Andy Roberts. And hopefully he could hold some good winning spell for West Indies in the upcoming T20 World Cup. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, he's known for his speed and aggression with the ball. His capability to extract bounce and swing makes him a lethal component. And he's been the leader in his young age for the last, you know, two, three years of this bowling attack. And he's given it his heart and soul. He's going to play a long time, I mean, hopefully, right? And will end up as one of the greatest West Indies bowlers. Joseph, number 12 for us, this West Indies squad prediction list. Let us know what you guys think of this list so far, guys. And before we move on, I want to bring you guys a quick quiz question as we do in our other videos. So, this particular video, the quiz question, I'm going to pop it up on the screen. This Barbadian was known to be a hard-hitting batsman. In 108 tests, he scored 7,558 runs at an average of 44.72. And you identify this former coach of Bangladesh. I'll bring up the answer later on, closer to the end of the video. So stay tuned. Let us know. Drop your answers in the comments, what you guys think of this questions, and what you guys think of the picks so far. So let's move on to the next one, Mark. Who are we going with at number 11, man? Yes, I'm going with Hayden Walsh, right arm leg spinner. So recently, he's been bowling much better. I hardly bowled too many bad balls and long hops, and his variations and accuracy has been spot on. And the reason why I'm going with Hayden Walsh over Moti. Moti and the other spin I'm choosing bowl basically the same kind of variety and same style. So I just want to give the, the team 
an aggressive attacking option. And we all know Peyton Walsh had good value as a fielder and as a lower batsman as well. So well-rounded, all-round player. I think he would do good in this World Cup coming up as well. T20, you know, spin is like you need a leg spinner in your team. And he established himself as a key leg spin bowler in this West Indies white ball teams. His effectiveness taking wickets and crucial middle overs and his fielding, as you mentioned, Mark, is an additional asset. Saves crucial runs, takes important catches, bowls his four overs, giving his captain an option to provide those crucial breakthroughs in the middle. You know, Hayden Walsh, number 11, comes in at number 11 for us. And again, it's one of those things where he brings a different skill set. Hayden Walsh, number 11 for us, guys. Who are we going with at number 10, Mark? Yes, number 10, I'm going with Rust and Trace, a batsman, middle order batsman with about six or seven. Keep the innings together and bowl some very handy off spin. In T20 cricket, uh, you want your attack to have a good bit of variation and different type of bowling. You don't want to give the batsman the same thing all the time. So, with his off spin, would add very good value to the West Indies team. And if there's a collapse in the batting, Rust and Chase could hold the middle together. So that's why I'm going with Rust and Chase. A very good cricketer, technical batsman, goes under the radar quite a bit but a very effective and efficient cricketer. He's a versatile player, right? And he can excel both with the bat and with the ball. Primary skill set, obviously, he's a batsman first who can give you some good off-spin bowling. You know, he reminds me of, again, a bit of Carl Hooper type of a player. You know, never was able to match similar type of quality over a long, consistent periods of time and has been in and out of the, the red ball teams for the West Indies. But for T20, you need a versatile player who can come in and do many different types of roles. And, you know, Rostin Chase is that guy to, to cover up a lot of those holes that may get created. Middle order batter could give you some good handy off spin bowling provides another different option to the captain. Rostin Chase comes in at number 10 for us, guys. Let's move on to number nine, Mark. Who are we going with on number nine, man? Number nine, Aki Hussein, left arm orthodox. We're going to be bowling the new ball. Not going to be turning it, but with, um, just bowling using the arm, his variation, bowling his arm balls and, you know, quicker delivery. And normally he's very accurate and gets through his overs very quickly as well. A very good feeler and contributes with his bat, with the batting as well. As well. So Aki Hussein is going to be one of the live wires for West Indies in that upcoming T20 World Cup. He's going to have to bring his electric fielding, his electric ability to just lift the team and, and the viewers because he's that 360 type of a player, right? Where he can bat, he can bowl, he can field. He's a modern day player and provide value at any point in the game, any any crucial time where he can come in and deliver and hold under pressure. So Akil Hussain, definitely one of the mainstays of this squad, of the, of the T20 World Cup, and will be one of the most key players in my opinion for the West Indies if they are to you know go far in this T20 World Cup so Akil Hussain comes in at number nine for us and before we move on guys I want to let you guys know that this video again is brought to you by MSDA's Caribbean man cricket bat Matthew Max cricket bat Mark's probably got some bat, as you can see, lying around in the background. So, Mark, you want to show off some of those beauties again, man? Yeah, th this one is uh, a great A. Not sure if you could see it, right? But yeah. very good greens. Nice shape, dot bill shape. Two pounds, nine ounces. Has great pinks. Nice, beautiful greens. Nice spine on the back there. All right, guys, you got to check me out if you want one of these beauties. You know, if you want to hit sixes and boundaries, well-balanced bat for you. All right? Really feels good in my hand. You know, everybody who used one of these bats made the career best or did something extraordinary. I just want to say as well, you know, you see Sonny Lambris, Winwood Islands, a West Indies player using this. Made the most runs for Winwoods this season, right? Jerry Meyer, one of the open batsmen for Winwoods, did well as well. Jeremy Tolizano, one of the Winwoods open batsmen, did well with MST bats as well. So guys, you got to give it a chance. You know, the guys who are using it are performing and showing confidence in, in the underdog. So you do the same. All right. Thank you. And support the underdog guys. And as you can see screen, you know, MSDA sponsor use um, code, the reverse scoop for the special discount when you reach out to Mark and yeah, you guys will be able to get your hands on these amazing, beautiful, uh, ball or killer. And guys, I just want to tell you, you support me. I support the youngsters. The bat you see in the background here, these two, that's for an under 14 guy he played for St. Vincent and Winwood Islands. All right. So when you support me, I'm able to give back to a kid. And a lot of times I look at the situation of the kid. You know, I want to know their parents, you know, I want to know their struggles and stuff. I just want to give somebody something to give somebody. If a kid really needs it and the parents can't afford it and struggling, I will come in and help. Thank you again, Mark, for, for the support of the youngsters, man, and everything you do. So let's move on to the next one. Who are we going with on number number, number, number eight, eight? Number eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're going to go with um, Romario Shepard. Hard-hitting batsman all-rounder. With the bat, 
I'm very confident Tepper could produce some whirlwind hits and some lusty hits and match winning knocks. My problem I just worried about is just his bowling. It seems to be a little bit too much on the expensive side for a main bowler in the team. So let's hope he could work on his bowling and get his confidence up. I mean, and he's a match winner. You know, he would always be in my team to go with the other all rounders. Yeah, Ramari Shepard is, you know, is very promising. He has been for the last couple of years. We, we could see the talent. Fast bowling all rounder who brings energy and skill both with ball and bat. His ability to bowl at the death and execute Yorkers and slower ball makes him an asset in the closing stages of an innings. And while his power hitting capabilities can be very crucial, uh, you know, adding late runs. So he brings a different dynamic again, a different type of an all rounder to Jason Holder or or even uh, an Andre Russell. So Ramari. Mario Shepard comes in at number eight for us. Who are we going with at number seven, Mark? I'm going with Andrew Russell. Once fit, exciting player, match winner, world-class player. All I love to see Russell do is produce more when West Indies really need it. You know, when West Indies backs against the wall, hopefully he could come up with the goods. I mean, the, qu- the quality of player and stature he carries around as a, as a world-class T20 cricketer. I would just really love to see him when West Indies really struggling backs against the wall to come up with these matches winning performances we all know what he's capable of all right hopefully he can produce some some good overs economical overs we know he have different variations in his bowling but would really love to see him control that economy rate as, as well bring it down just a little notch as well but all is great to have russell wrong in the west indies team a fantastic player and match winner yeah man what can we say about andre russell right renowned for his incredible strength and ability to hit the ball miles and long distances like he's one of the most feared all-rounders in limited overs cricket let's just say his fast bowling is equally effective even though sometimes his economy can be a bit high but capable of delivering quick, tight overs and providing breakthroughs when needed. He's a dual threat and a match winner, you know, on his day. So he's going to be one of the, again, another key player for the West Indies. If they are to win this World Cup, Andre Russell would have to have a massive World Cup, in my opinion, for, you know, Wendy's to make sure that they can lift the cup. If this guy comes off, man, there's highly likely chances that they're definitely get into the top four. And then from there, who knows, you know, it's a World Cup game. If you play good on the day, that's all we need to do. So Andre Russell, big game player, comes in at number seven for us. Who are we going with at number six? Yes, the choice is, was really between Hetmeyer and Rutherford, but I'm going to go with Rutherford. I think Rutherford brings a different dimension. Very good, powerful strike of the ball, and he hits the ball clean down the ground over extra yeah. cover, mid on, mid off. Good, talented fever. Very good with the ball as well. Could give you two handy overs if you need it to. I would go with him over Hetmeyer because I think Hetmeyer, once he plays with West Indies team, for some reason, he's not focused and he, he's not really producing as he should. So I'm going to give Shafin Rutherford the opportunity to play the next World Cup for West Indies and hopefully he can some good performances together. Rutherford has quickly established himself as a promising young talent in the West Indies cricket, primarily through his performances in various T20 leagues around the world. He's known for his ability to score quick runs and and change the course of an inning with his aggressive stroke play. His fielding is another significant aspect of his game. He's a versatile player, can play in the top of the order, middle of the order, provides depth and flexibility in the batting lineup. His style of play is particularly suited to the shorter formats where his ability to hit big and score fast can be a game changer during critical phases of the game. And as Mark mentioned, a reason why we're we picked Rutherford over a guy like Hetmeyer. It's just professionalism. Hetmeyer lacks that professionalism from where we see at least a bit. So in a World Cup T20 game, you need focus, you need discipline, and you need players that can carry that. So from the history looking at it, Rutherford was uh, you know, easier guy to go with for us than a guy like Hetmeyer. Even though Hetmeyer may bring more talent, but talent can only take you so much farther, right? Hard work needs to be applied with it. So so that's where we'll end that conversation on Hetmeyer. Who are we going with on number five? We're going to go with Jason Holder, right arm fast bowler. You know, hopefully could produce some economic spells for West Indies. He had a dumb time loss of form the last year or two but hopefully with playing in England conditions and playing the longer format you could regain some of those skills and um, economical bowling for West Indies in the upcoming T20 always a, gr- a capable batsman with the bat a top class batsman I would always always rated Jason batting 
this technique and style and ability very highly. Jason Holder is my number five pick in the list. And I think, Mark, you were very kind to Jason Holder, calling him a fast bowler. <laughs> you know, I think uh, him being uh, in that medium 70, mid 70s, you know, late 70s kind of a mold. His experience and calm demeanor is the cornerstone, I think it's going to be for this team because his all round capabilities, medium fast bowling, lower order batting, contribute significantly. But I think his leadership quality is what's really going to, it's going to be added value to this West Indies 15 squad of 15, even though if he's in the lineup or he's not in the lineup, I think he can add value to the squad just by making sure that they make the right decisions that he can use all of his experience in World Cup games and crucial situations to help the skipper out, Robin Powell, you know, so I think it's going to be a very, very key piece for them to keep around, even if he's not in the lineup. Let's move on to number four, Mark. Who are we going with at number four, man? Number four, the skipper, Robin Powell. We all know he just powers, it's just power, power, power for Robin Powell. Hopefully once he get going, you know, he can play some whirlwind knock because over the top you know but very capable batsman is you know power hitting and ability to finish games it's going to be invaluable to the west indies middle lower order he can offer some medium pace bowling as well but obviously you know his batting and finishing abilities is what the west indies will need and they will rely on as a skipper and he's going to come in at five six you know in the middle order and will be expected to finish off games and score those late runs that it's going to propel west indies to you know those good totals so he has to bat at two 200, 250 plus strike rate every time. Big responsibility. Again, he's proven himself, you know, over over time that he has the ability to listen and lead the team, you know, from the front. So Robin Powell, number four for us on this, you know, West Indies T20 World Cup squad prediction. And let us know what you guys think of this squad so far, guys. And if you guys would make any changes to this squad, but let us know in the comments what you guys think. And before you move on, I want to give you guys the answer to that quiz question that we had brought up earlier. So the quiz question that we had asked you guys was this spectacled Barbadian was known to be a hard hitting batsman in 180 test he scored 7,558 runs at an average of 44.72 can you identify this former coach of Bangladesh Mark do you know this answer yeah Gordon Greenwich there you go man you got it right absolutely so Gordon Greenwich was one of the greatest opening batsmen in the history of cricket although you know he wore glasses he didn't play cricket in them so that's another fact that we wanted to just add in there Gordon Greenwich was the answer for that question and thank you for playing along guys and Mark on the money with the answer there so we're in the top three now guys mark let the viewers know man who we're going with at number three yeah, nicholas puran always know just aggressive aggressive batting bats at 150 160 all the time strike rate it doesn't matter if West Indies are three wickets down for one run or 80 for one. Puran is going to come in and play the same way. He can alternate with the wicket keeping duties with Chai Hope as well, but a very valuable player, top of the order. And any given day, it's just a treat to watch. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, his dynamic and explosive batting style makes him a key player in the middle order. His ability to accelerate the scoring rate and take on bowlers during the middle overs or at the death overs provides a crucial advantage. Although he's not as consistent as we would love him to be as cricket fans, and, and want to see him being aggressive all the time, but he comes off, looks so good to the eye, can single-handedly win the game for any side that he plays. So another proven match winner for the Windies in Nicholas Puran. And let the viewers know, man, who number two is. Number two is Shea Hope, um, batsman with a keeper. The top T20 batsman or T10 batsman or let's say ODI batsman for West Indies. Hopefully he could show some more of his elegant form and consistency over the last couple of years. So I expect great things from Shy Hope. We, we could keep in duties. I expect him as well to do a, a tremendous job standing back. Shy Hope is going to, main duties is really to make runs for this team. And I would go with him at the top of the order. He's a linchpin in the West Indies batting lineup known for his fluid technique and ability to play long innings. He's going to be the guy who's expected to open and play 20 overs while other players bat around him and score at a much higher strike great so that's the role that he has in this team is to play those 20 overs maybe play 50 60 deliveries and score 80 90 runs strike rate of perhaps 150 you know plus at the end of it but the other guys that are going to bat around him are perhaps going to be batting at 200 plus and a much higher strike rate so but again if he comes off he can you know take on any bowling attack bat at 200 plus strike rate as well so shea hope's going to be a key player for them an ex skipper as well of this of this white ball team so brings a lot of experience 
Simmons brings that responsible professionalism where he knows how to get the job done when the team needs and follows a process. That's what I love about Shea Hope. He has a certain process. He follows it and gets good results from from that. So Shea Hope at number two and number one, Mark, we're going to do the same thing again, man. Let the viewers know the detail of who we're going with as the last player on this squad. And we'll let uh, viewers take the guess and announce it right at the end. Yeah, hard hitting batsman from St. Lucia, Winwood Islands. At the top of the order. Also does some wicket keeping duties, which strikes the ball hard. Not a really elegant looking batsman, but just a powerful strike of the ball. When he gets away or he's in good form, you know, he could be very devastating and destructive. Right-handed opening batsman, top of the order. Played in the Pakistan Super League as well. You Just a little hint for you guys. Mark's giving you a lot of details as well. Mark, let the viewers know, man, who we're going with on this last spot. Johnson Charles, the hard hitting right in the batsman from St. Lucia. If you haven't checked out our greatest T20 West Indies 11 of all time, you can find it on the screen right here. Mark Gardane and Nabil Khan from the Reverse Scoop signing off. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.